So this is the second challenge which I've uh, set uh, online. So if I very quickly go into this, this time I've set a few more uh, similar, similar questions to the previous one. Some of them are a little bit different. Some of them are a little bit more difficult. Uh, so we've got one question here, making it blue. Uh, so what you're asked to do is you're given an image and you need to try and make it a little bit more bluer. Uh, you've got another question, uh, Rob the robot wants to visit one of his friends, but who? So you need to ask, get him to visit one of these friends at random. Uh, you've got another drawing task. Um, this, this type of question does come up quite frequently um, where they will give you uh, an image um, or uh, a scenery to try and, uh, to try and uh, draw uh, using shapes. You've got a toy car one, so it's similar to um, where you're trying to get from point A to point B. Uh, this one is also quite, um, quite common. Uh, you've got another one to draw a random shape. Uh, so again, that's another one which does come up quite frequently as well. And then another one, which is relativity, which they give you a maths equation and then they ask you to create a program to calculate uh, the maths equation. Uh, so let's start off with the first one. So make it blue. Albert only likes blue flowers. He has an image of a red flower that he wants to make look like this. He designs a program that selects all the pixels where the value of the red component of the pixel is greater than the average of the green and blue values. For the selected pixels, sets the value of the blue component to the red pixel value. And then for the selected pixels, set the value of the red pixels to zero. In the workspace below, write and run Albert's program for him. So they've given you an, uh, a task. They've told you exactly what to do step by step. So this is something that they usually do, give you a step by step uh, task. And you just basically just need to convert that into code. Um, so in the previous one, um, I mentioned how uh, images work. You have each pixel, which is a, a dot uh, or a pixel, uh, an image is made up of loads of dots. Um, imagine like a grid. Uh, these are all called pixels. And what we want to do is we want to go through each and every pixel and then run a bit of code through it. So we're going to head over to the image uh, section and we're going to say for P in pixels, uh, let's drag that in and what that will do is that will go through each and every pixel in that image and do something to it uh, so the first thing we want to do is select all the pixels where the value of the red component of the pixel is greater than the average of the green and blue values so select all the pixels so we're going through all the pixels where the value of the red component where the value of the red component of the pixel so remember each pixel has an rgb value so we're taking the r value there is greater than the average of the green and blue values. So we're saying if R is greater than the average of G and B. So in this case, uh, we're going to use an if statement. So if, let's drag that in, if something is met, then we're going to do something. Uh, and we're going to use a bit of maths here because obviously we want to get the average as well. Let's head back to the image because what we want to do is we want to get uh, the R value, we also want to get the G value, so I can duplicate that. And obviously we also want the B value, so we can duplicate that again. Uh, let's scroll that, in fact, let's zoom out a little bit, RGB, which we're gonna use. Whenever you have an if statement, you will need to go to logic and grab one of these. Uh, and in this, you will also have this little drop down here, and obviously you have the equals, uh, and you have all these other options. You have greater than, less than, greater than, or equal to, or not equal to. Uh, so that's equal to, that's not equal to. Uh, you have less than, greater than, uh, and that's less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So in this case, what we wanna say is, select all the pixels with the value of the red component. So we're going to say where the red component is greater. So we're going to say is greater than, uh, the average of the green and blue values. So we've got the green and blue values. Obviously, we want to do a bit of maths with it. Okay, so there's various ways we can calculate the average of them. Um, I'm going to, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Um, I'm going to say, let's add them together. So if it's greater than them added together, but that still doesn't give me the average. Obviously, I want to take that. Let's grab another one of these math symbols. And we can either divide it by 2, times it by 0 0.5, whatever we want. I'm going to write times. 
uh, let's pop that in there times 0 0.5 so if my r value is greater than these two added together and half to so the average uh, then what i want to do is for the selected pixels so any pixel that meets that set the value of the blue component to the red pixel value so let's head back to image so we want to set the blue component to get red component okay so set the blue value so if it goes to one of these pixels and the red value is greater than the average of the green and blue we're going to set the blue value to red to whatever the red is um, and then we, for the selected pixels sets the value of the red pixels to zero so again i can come here and i can say set this value to zero so just so you know what that does is uh, that will go through each and every pixel check the red value check the green and blue add the green and blue together divide it by two or times it by a half check if that red value is greater than them two if it is whatever the red value is so let's just say the red value is 255 um, and the blue value is zero it's now going to set that blue value to 255 and it will set that red value to zero so any red that's there is basically setting it to zero uh, let's run that see if we are correct there we go run and that's correct so one thing that with this does is remember it does tell us whether the answer is correct or not and we can come back and redo it if needed so the next question we have here uh, again uh, let's try and zoom out to that a little bit so rob the robot wants to visit one of his friends but who his friends live at the green squares the task is to write a program that randomly chooses a friend for rob to visit and then gets him there so there's a few ways you can do this um one thing you could do is you can ask it to select um you know either one two or three at random and if it's a one you direct it to this two you direct it to this three you direct it to this um, what I would prefer is something easier. I'll just get it to move around randomly. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a repeat loop in this case. And I'm going to get it to select a number at random. So um, let's use a random number. And I'm going to say between one and two, because then it's either just or one or a two. And I'm going to say if the number that I pick, and remember when we use an if statement, we need to use one of these. Uh, let's put one of these in. So if my random number that it picks, let's zoom out a little bit. I hope you can, guys can still see that. Um, if my random number that is picked between one and two is equal to one or two, let's say one for now, then I'm going to get you to turn right. Okay, so now what's going to happen is it's randomly going to turn right. Uh, and if it turns right or not, I'm going to get it to move forward. Okay, so it's always moving forward. Just randomly, it might turn right, it might not. Uh, so now I'm going to run that. So that it's basically just going to move around randomly. And because I've got that in repeat, that's going to constantly do that. Okay, so right now, all it's doing is moving around really randomly. Let's speed that up a bit. And eventually, it will head into one of those houses. I have no idea which one. It's completely random. Hopefully one day today. So literally random and eventually it should get into one of these houses usually does do it a little bit more quicker than this but obviously it is random so anything can happen at all and unfortunately we're just gonna have to wait hopefully the time doesn't finish but there we go got there in the end correct answer saved okay let's head over to the next question so Phoebe decided she will try and draw Pac-Man by programming an image with two shapes a yellow circle with a radius 20 a white triangle also with radius 20. She decided that X and Y coordinates for both shapes should all be given in multiples of 10. Write a program called using the commands available to draw Pac-Man. So usually what you do is you'd be given um, an image to try and draw using shapes and you'd be given something similar to this. Um, okay, so what we can do is, uh, and in some cases you may be given this extra thing as well, uh, and obviously we can see why that is, but we'll take a look at that in a little while. So I need to draw two shapes. So the first shape I'm gonna draw, I'm going to call it circle, because that's going to be my yellow circle. Uh, how many sides do I want it? We can keep it 10, see how it goes. We can change it to 360 later on if we need to. 
I'm going to change the color of that to yellow, obviously to match the Pac-Man. It's told me that the yellow circle has a radius of 20, which I'm going to keep. To position X and Y, as you know, with coordinates, we can see the X coordinates going across. That will actually be 50, but you can always do a bit of trial and error to see if you get it correct or not. And the Y position, which is this way. So again, that looks like another 50. And remember, I can always just run that to see. Oh, there we go. So that's done that there for me. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that. I can drag another one in, not a problem. And this time I'm going to draw a triangle, uh, or I'm just going to call it T for now, T for short. It doesn't really matter what you call it, as long as it's a different name to this shape. Otherwise, it will rewrite or redraw that shape. Uh, obviously, it's a triangle, so it's going to be three. Uh, the color in this case is going to be white, which they told us already. Uh, the radius in this case they've told us is 20 as well. Now I need to see, obviously that's going to go around here somewhere. I can play around with 60, bit of trial and error. Why? Let's try 50 as well. So it's in the middle. Let's run that. Okay, that's obviously not quite right. So that's not exactly in the middle. So let's shift that to the right a little bit. Let's try 70. And the shape name, obviously, that I want to rotate is T. I can try that clockwise, 45 degrees. Let's see how that works. Bit of trial and error. So it looks like it's in the correct position now, but it looks like I just need to rotate that a little bit more. I can always play around with it and see how it goes. Uh, let's try 180. Nope, still not quite right. 270. There we go. That's correct. And my answer is saved. Uh, my toy car, this one is quite straightforward. A toy car has broken steering. It can only turn right. So obviously in this case, we want to turn left. So how can we turn left if we can only turn, if we can only turn right? Well, what we can do is we can turn right three times. In this issue, in this question, however, um, your program must be made from 12 blocks or less. So we can obviously move forward. Uh, and what they've given us is they've actually said, if there's a path ahead, do something else. So we can see if there's a path ahead, we always want to go ahead. So we can say move forward. If there's no path ahead, what we can do is we can either turn. Well, we can actually do another one and say if there's a path to the right, we can turn right. So we can use something called a nested if statement. So where we put an if statement inside another one. So if there's a path to the right, what we're going to do now is we're going to turn right. Otherwise, what we can do is we can turn right three times. So now what I've got is I'm, if there's a path ahead, I'm going to move forward. If there's a path to the, otherwise if not, then they will check if there's a path to the right. If there's a path to the right, we'll turn right. If there's no path to the right, then it will turn right three times, so turn left. Now I would need to put this in a repeat loop so that it does it again and again and again. So let's run that. Remember, always do a bit of trial and error. If it doesn't work, not a problem. Try and debug it, see what's gone wrong with your code, come back and try and fix it. There we go. Um, so this one is correct. Now we can move on to the next one, five star. This one does look quite tricky, but we'll get there. Here is some information about how to construct a five star. Uh, write a program to draw the five star shown. Uh, so let's start off with, uh, obviously what we can see is we're pointing there in the middle. Obviously that we don't want to be pointing there straight ahead. We want to move to the right or to the left a little bit. Uh, we can see that's 36 degrees, uh, that angle there. So what we're going to do is we are going to split that in half so we can turn either right or left 18 degrees. So first thing we want to do is turn right 18 degrees. Let's test that out. There we go. And we seem to be in heading in the right direction now. Uh, it hasn't told us the length, uh, so we might just need to guess this. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move forward. Let's move forward. Let's try 50. Okay, that's obviously only gone halfway, so we can do that 100. There we go. Now we're facing forward. Okay, now obviously what we want to do is we want to rotate around. Okay, so it's now actually told us, okay, that that much there, so where we're facing forward there, we've got 144 degrees. Um, 
So what I'm actually going to do is uh, I'm actually going to do a bit of maths in my head. So if I'm facing forward in this direction here, uh, that is all 144 degrees. I want to rotate a little bit more. So let's see if they've given us any hints. So sometimes they do, but they haven't in this case. Uh, so what I'm going to do is let's try 366 take away 144. So I will do a bit quick bit of maths. Um, 360 take away 144. Uh, it should be uh, 216. So let's try that. Okay, so this is just me trying my maths out a bit. Okay, and there we go. <coughs> so now that I know that I've done that correctly, okay, I probably need to move forward again, 10, 100 steps, and I'm going to rotate again 216 degrees. So instead of me actually coding this again and again and again, let's pop that into a repeat loop. So ask me how many times I want to do it. Let's try 10, but it should be... How many lines do we have? One, two, three, four, five. It should work with five times. Let's try that. Let's run that. There we go. All done. Okay, so a bit of maths involved there as well. Um, so let's see how we do that. So I turn right, make sure I'm on track. Uh, move forward 100 steps. Got that right. Played around with the angle. And then I repeated that a few times. You might be given quite... Chances are you will be given a question like that as well. Okay, this one does look quite difficult, but in actual fact, it's really easy. Albert Einstein's famous equation tells us how much energy E is in joules is equivalent to a mass of matter M is in grams. Now, I personally don't really understand exactly what that says, but that's not a problem. What it's telling me is E equals mc squared. C is the speed of light, which is this number here, a uh, three with loads of zeros. Uh, Okay, um, for example, 10 grams of matter is equivalent to this many joules of energy. So I've got 20 grams of matter, uh, so that 10 will go into the M. Okay, I'll do C squared, so C, which I have, which is this number here, uh, and I can square that. So complete the function provided so that it outputs E as an integer, given any positive value of M between 1 and 100. Do this by providing the code to perform the calculation above. Do not alter any of the blocks provided. So what they've done is they've given us a maths equation. They've told us exactly what the maths equation is. They just want us to convert that into code. So I need to work out what E is equal to um, when someone gives me a number for M. So very easily, all I'm going to do is I'm going to set E to. What do I want to set E to? So what that means is that it means E is equal to something. Now I'm going to do a bit of maths. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is m. So we can grab my variable called m, and I can multiply that by this number here squared. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another maths equation. I can actually put this inside there, and I can say times, and I can put my number here. So I'm going to actually copy that. I'm going to paste that in there paste that in there okay and now it should give me that so e equals m times c squared let's see how that works if i run that it's giving me that number is that correct what i was after correct so all i've simply done is i've converted that taken the equation they've given me put it into equation and i've done that so they do look quite tricky but they're not that tricky once you know exactly what you're doing um I will post a link in the comments or in the uh, in the in the details about the the video. So please do give that a go if I haven't sent that to you already. Um, and yeah, feel free to post comments if you find any tricky. If you want me to explain anything uh, anymore, uh, see how it goes and take a look out for some of my other videos with some more quizzes.